Alrighty, so we're back again with Chris versus Bagiofro. Chris, in his usual colour, um, I don't think I've ever seen a game with Chris where he's not been the colour green. <laughs> but uh, he is going to be playing as Huns uh, to the top of the map, and we've got B VNS Bagiofro in red playing as Huns as well, down to the south. The map, it looks like Nomad, let me just have a quick check. Uh, oh no, it's Coastal, never mind. Yeah, they've oh, got oh, the no, town centers there nomad. already. They've got the TCs, what am I saying? <laughs> yes. Yeah, as soon as I saw it though, I did think Nomad as well. Yeah, it I looks, just saw the it, town center staring at me. Yeah, it looks so much like Nomad. Um, it's it's pretty much identical, but uh, it is indeed coastal. And as you said, they start with the TCs. I have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, they're playing as do it all the time. They're playing as Huns, which is uh, nice, because, of course, it's not Vikings. And with Coastal being, of course, Coastal, you've got water and land in a mix, and I absolutely love seeing Huns in this kind of situation. Yeah, that would they say from the houses really builds up on maps like this. Yeah, not having to build the houses, it really helps with, of course, getting docks and, and taking water. But not only that, once they reach the castle age, they can really start to push the center of the map. Um, because, of course, this is, it's wallable, but it's not really feasible to, to wall out full out, you know, full on. If someone wants to take the middle, they can do it. Um, they, they could. They could push out with some rams, they can add some cavalry archers in, and they can suddenly be in your base with a load of cavalry archers. So it's really that mix of land and water, which I really do like about this map. Yeah, looking at all the positioning of the resources as well, it doesn't look too bad. It looks like Bacteriofro has a bit of gold there to his right, mm -hmm. but apart from that, it looks fairly well spread, which you can actually see like, some really unfair maps out there as well, and you can lose maps and games just completely <laughs> on that. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, I was said, you know, Nomad, it looks so much like this. Nomad and Coastal, well, this map looks very similar to a Nomad map, but at least this time the resources are fair, because sometimes in Nomad you can have all the golds on one side. It does make it very unfair. But they've got, you know, a very reasonably uh, spread resources here. They've both got front gold, uh, but it's not too much of a big deal because most, well, most likely they'll be going for water first anyway. Yeah, the only thing I can see is that hill in front of Bacchiofro there on the left of his town centre could be a bit of an issue later in the game, especially when trying to hold that gold. But like you said, generally they should probably go for the water first, because of course they're going to want to get those fishing ships out and get that food economy up. Yeah, precisely. Having the having the fishing ships makes so much difference because if you've got a good fish boom, then you can start to pressure on the land that much faster because that extra food that the fishing ships bring, uh, you can get up to the castle age faster. You can use it to produce uh, like 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 cavalry hussars, for instance, which of course makes great raiding units in the late game. So having the fish really make a big difference. Uh, it's it's a massive bonus you can get because essentially you're creating villages to get, gather one resource, fishing ships to gather another one. You can build fishing ships while you're upping. Uh, it's, it just adds to your economy so much. Yeah, and I think we'll probably see that from both of them. Um, but sometimes you do see some really early aggression on maps like these as well. Um, it's not unusual to see players try and do a combination of both, maybe add some archers in at the feudal age to try and harass gold, for instance. Um, of yeah. course, Chris has scouted this gold here. He knows exactly where it is. Uh, he knows it's on the front. Bajofro possibly scouting. Yeah, he's going to go over and scout Chris right now. He's not seen his gold on the front, but it's not impossible for him to actually decide to go and start to harass in the feudal age as well, just to slow his galleys down, for instance. Yeah, on things like that as well, every now and then we do see a tower come up behind some wood every now and then just to get that little bit of harassment to stop those galleys coming out. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's not unusual to see a tower. Bacho having a little pick here. I wonder if he's going to say he's got a bad map again. Um, <laughs> That'd be interesting. Uh, it's, honestly, though, it's not too bad. It could be a lot worse. Yeah, it could be a lot worse. I mean, the only thing that I'd say is is a little bit bad is that his TC is very close to the water, and if Chris does win the water control, then he could actually, if he's got war galleys, take out this TC uh, from the water because of the extra range that they have. But I really yeah, it's highly a big doubt thing that. on water maps. On even the berries there, the back Jerofro could be bad because they could get harassed by galleys if he was to lose the water straight away. So it means that he has to go for water. He doesn't really have much of a choice unless he puts a heap of pressure onto Chris really, really quickly. Yeah, I mean, for instance, if he stops Chris from gathering gold, I mean, Chris's only gold is, is here on the front and here on the right. If he actually stops Chris from gathering gold, then Chris can't make galleys anyway. Um, 
but I can't see him getting super aggressive on land uh, really early on. I imagine they're both going to go, you know, four fishing ships um, up to feudal and then um, try and galley rush as much as they can. Yeah, even speaking about that, the rush distance between them is quite massive as well, so it's going to slow anything down. It's why drushing on a map like this, it'll take, what, like at least two minutes game time to get over there to really try and yeah, do something. Yeah. And by then, your opponent's going to have things out to try and deal with that. Yeah, more than likely. Um, I'm going to speed things up a little bit because, I mean, during the Dark Age, there really isn't so much variety at all, uh, so much variation, I suppose, at all. Um, it's pretty much the standard build-up, and unless you see rushing or something like that, um, you can kind of expect them to go this way. Uh, as well as you said, while they're upping, they can continue building fishing ships, which is really going to help out their, their food economy a little bit. Um, Bajofro is actually continuing to add them in, and it seems like Chris might have actually just stop there. Yeah, he stopped on 5. Bajofro going up to 6. And if he continues to build fishing ships, then he might be in a nice spot. But it looks like, oh, 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 <laughs> Chris going to come forwards here. Ooh, I see that on the minimap right now. Looks like there's a wall off going on by back to your front. Yeah. I'm probably heaps behind on your stream, but there we go. It looks like the rush distance isn't enough to stop Chris going forward. Yeah, and there's actually going to be a hole in this wall, Badjofro unable to take it up, the harassment from Chris's scout there, really nice, and wow, he's actually going to go with a forwards, and it's unusual to see players actually going for a full-on forward here, um, especially on these kind of maps, because it, it's possible to, to wall. Um, of course, Badjofro a little slow there, and it looks like Chris might actually be going for Man at Arms, um, he's making a... Oh no, he's going for Spearman now. He was making a couple of militia there just to help out. Bad Jofro trying to tower his gold on the front. Uh, he really needs to protect this. It's a huge deal if he loses gold here. And yeah, Chris is like, only, yeah. I think, he's only just taking gold at this stage. So he might even see something a bit old schooly here where Chris goes for just mass skirmishes depending on how much gold he decides to take. Yeah, and Spearman as well. Um, I love, I just love watching the old games where the players would just go Spearman and Skirms and just, they wouldn't even take gold until like really late on in Feudal. You get those long drawn out Feudal Wars. Uh, doesn't look like Chris is going to be so successful here though. He's actually being forced away and forwarding, as I said, is pretty damn risky on these kind of maps because your opponent can wall up and it looks like Bad Jofra might be able to just do that. Yeah, if he could have seized that gold or something, kept that from going up for a while, it could have worked out in his favour. But he lost a villager there on the hill, so... And he hasn't done really any damage with it. He's kind of prevented the villagers from gathering so much because he's forced the wall up, he's forced the tower going up there. But apart from that, he hasn't killed anything off. He hasn't really stopped anything. Yeah, as you say, other than the uh, villager idle time and, and the building of the tower, he's not forced too much out. Of course, he's had to make some militia of his own, which has caused him to have a little less gold. And now it looks like, yeah, he's going to transition straight back to the standard sort of grushing to ex that you'd expect. But I do like that he tried to mix it up a bit. I, I like that he's trying to do something a little different. Um, it always adds a little bit of flavor to those these games. And now we see Bad Jofro going with a stone wall off. Um, so he really does not want Chris in his base at this stage. He wants to play the standard grushing game. Uh, as we know from back to Jeffro's game, he's definitely seen as one of the bigger wallers up there. He's probably on league with Tim on some maps. <laughs> uh, recently he's stopped so much, but there's some there where you just think this is like two layer of stone wall there and you're just thinking it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's... It can be a little tedious to see players constantly just over going over the top with the walls, but to be fair, it is you know part of the game, and if it helps you to win, then there's no reason not to. It's just a little frustrating sometimes when you're watching it, and it's like, oh god, here we go, he's walling again. <laughs> yeah, like you said, it's it's in the game, it's there, it's meant to be used. Feel free to use it. It's just tedious is probably the best way to put it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but now, of course, we see. Chris starting to make some galleys. He's probably going to push out, try and take out some of these fishing ships when he can. Uh, but I, I'm li I like I like this. I like that he actually tried to do a forwards. Um, it was pretty unsuccessful. He didn't manage to sneak anything into um, Bajofro's base. Oh no, he did. My bad. Um, he did get a couple of militia and spearmen in, but it really isn't anything too major. Yeah, saying that though, he's still got that lumber camp at the front though, and he does have those villages still there, so we could see something a little later on from him. 
Yeah, he's kind of pushed out. He's forced Bajofra to wall himself in. He's walled this gold out of Bajofra. Oh, his own. Oh no, he's not. That was uh, the center gold anyway. That wasn't Bajofra's. So Bajofra still has all of his resources, but he's forced himself to wall in. And later on, it would be a good platform to him to for him to make archery ranges here and, and try and pressure it maybe with a siege workshop. Yeah, he's got to get to that late game stage at the moment, though. That's really the big thing. Saying that, though, he is ahead a little bit in score right now, which means he could have a little bit of a better eco, or he could have had a few more galley kills or anything there. I don't think I've actually seen any of his galleys come around the side yet. No, actually, saying that, there's a few moving, moving around now. Yeah, he is moving them around, but there's not really been too much on the water just yet. I think probably his score is mainly just military, because he made those extra militia and, and the spearmen as well. And he did just get a, two villagers here on stone, which is really nice. Um, of course, he's forced Bajofra to make a tower. Bajofra has also had to make these stone walls. So he's going to have to take some stone now because, of course, once he does get castle, he will want to make those extra two town centers. And if you have a look at Bajofra's stone, he's got 15 left, which really isn't much at all. Yeah, so I guess that's another bonus on what Chris got out of that when he forced Bajofra to stone wall up nice and early. It's going to really hurt that. Well, it's not going to hurt so much, but he's going to be forced to put extra villages onto stone if he wants to put up more town centers. Yeah, precisely. And uh, Bajofro going up with a blacksmith right now. Um, we're probably going to see plus one for, from him for his galleys fairly soon. Um, Chris still trying to harass with his uh, with his militia and his scout and his spearmen. He's getting in there. He is going to try and take out some villages if he can. I mean, he's already got two, which is pretty good actually for for his uh, for two militia and a spearman and a scout it's really um, not bad at all but what it is is really getting his money worth off yeah, them exactly uh, it looks like he's not gonna get this villager it's so close um, if only he'd have got one more I think he's saying but at the end of the day he's forced these villagers to stop working he's really hurt them and if they're ever close to the shore and he manages to take water it's an easy one arrow to take these guys out which is uh, always a bonus um, yeah, exactly. If you can weaken them up, weaken them up. Yeah. He's um, starting to move down to the bottom as well now. We've got a couple of galleys coming in. I don't think Badger is really prepared for that many galleys. Um, there's only five right there, but he's only got three, four to defend, and the rest of them are a bit out of position, so he could get a few fishing ships for free here if he pushes forwards. And he's got more behind to back it up as well. So Chris looking actually pretty good here. He's going to get this fishing ship, which is instantly a bonus. And it looks like he might have to retreat here a little bit because Badgerfro does have uh, a few too many galleys for him to really engage that there. Yeah, like you were saying before, the fact that I'm still really fascinated by this forward that Chris got going on it yeah. actually did a lot, even if some people didn't notice it. But the fact he forced him to wall off, defend from these militia, spear, and scout, and galleys in all the same kind of area, Badgerfro would have been all over the place trying to deal with this. And this is exactly why he got these villager snipes. Yeah, exactly. And also as well, if you look at their economies right now, look how much wood by Jofro has. He was planning to go for galleys, but he has been so distracted by this forwards that his economy is really <laughs> unbalanced right now. He's got like a thousand wood and 80 gold. Um, he can afford to make loads of galleys, but he doesn't have the gold for it at the moment. And Chris, if you look at his, well, he's fairly even on wood and gold right now, and he's about to click to castle, actually. Yeah, Chris's economy has always been pretty up there. And back to your I didn't. Uh, I laughed so. I laughed when I saw the amount of wood he had available there. Yeah. It looks like he's just spending it now. If you have a look at his docks, he's got galleys, a lot of galleys queued up. Um, and he's probably, yeah, he's seeding a few more farms as well. But he's definitely not going to be up to castle anywhere near as fast as Chris is here. I think Chris is going to be up in just a second. Uh, maybe one more villager and he's going to go up. So again, we could see a faster castle from him, transition into war galleys, and then perhaps, I don't want to call it, uh, he's going to definitely have war galleys, but maybe from there be able to take the game. Um. <laughs> yeah, if he get, does enough damage from the water, and you said before how close his town centre was actually to the shoreline there, he might be able to get it just from war galley harass from the shore. Yeah, but precisely. That's going to depend on if Bakjofro gets up and puts more town centers up or if he gets enough villages out of there. But it's yeah. really going to force Bakjofro to do something different. He can't play the standard game from there. Yeah, exactly. I mean, right now he's got one villager gathering stone, so he should have enough stone for another TC once he gets up to the castle age. But as you can see, Chris is starting to take the water control here. He's already clicked up to castle, and Bakjofro is pretty damn far from getting up to castle right now. 
he needs a lot more food and if we have a look at his farms he doesn't actually have that many farms he's not got a huge amount of fishing ships um, pretty equal to, to Chris actually but Chris does have uh, a couple more farms here he's already clicked up so he doesn't really need all that food anyway yeah exactly it's just because he's killed off so many of the fishing ships and he wasn't ready to transition into farms he had the wood there but he had villagers doing other things he didn't really have any spare so much he did have that wood build up he could have sold a bit of that off but uh, it's, it's interesting to see what he decides to play it off and how he decides to do it yeah, I mean, at this stage the scores aren't that big, but a big, uh, you know, big difference between them. But obviously, you lose quite a bit of score once you go up to click up to the castle age, and then you regain it once you actually get to the castle age. So Chris is pretty far ahead right here. I mean, even just looking at the scores, he is quite far in the lead. Um, they're looking fairly even on the water. But of course, Chris is going to get an advantage pretty soon um, when he does upgrade his galleys. So he might want to just keep them alive for the time being, and. Um, try and avoid as much arrow fire as he can just until he gets up to the castle age yeah he's going for it he's going to be able to get that massive tech advantage and once he gets that it's really going to decide the rest of the game if back joe Fro can retreat not lose too many he might still be in with a chance but if chris just steamrolls him here that'll be the game yeah exactly i mean as you said these bit uh, earlier on the, the the berries close to the water he can snipe villagers from there he can hit the tc he can come around the side and maybe hit this stone as well which is kind of a big deal i mean water control is so important in games like this i mean not only because they can harass you from the shoreline but they can even you know, drop inside of your base later on okay so Chris and we could actually see there Chris was actually breaking down a bit of that wall there as well so he might even be preparing to go for some kind of land assault as well if he can't do enough damage with these war galleys yeah I mean, he's got a couple of archers here um, I don't know where his archery range is he looks like it's uh, back at his base yeah um, he could add some cavalry archers in if he breaks down this wall I mean it's only 244 HP left on that um, so he could actually break that down if he takes out this navy and oh some nice micro there from Chris as well managing to get a couple of galleys really easily plus two is completed and war galley is going to be completed in just a second as well so uh, Chris is in really good shape here yeah, back to Fro trying to do as much damage as he can now that he knows his opponent's going for these researches, and I don't think he's going to be able to do enough. No, he's definitely going to lose the majority of his galleys here. He's bringing them back up here, though. He's trying to move Chris, I think, away from his base. Um, if Bajirfro can actually draw him back, then he's going to delay the time it takes for Chris to actually get over and do that harassment down here. Um, just uh, Chris is circling really well there as well. Yeah probably behind you on the stream but the, the positioning there was yeah. great as it was yeah Bajo for getting absolutely trapped and he lost the majority of his ships there a thousand score difference now as that military does make so much of a difference and Bajo for stonewalling behind this again but now we're gonna see the war galleys coming in and we should be able to see Chris do some really good harassment from the shore here He's adding yeah, extra bits of stone wall coming up so again that's gonna eat into his ability to build town centers and of course gathering time yeah, precisely. Which is, of course, a sacrifice from stone walls. Mm -hmm. um, he's got enough for a new TC, but if you consider now, Bajirofro, he is up to castle, but Chris is going to have two TCs up and running by the time he even gets to castle age. Um, whereas Bajirofro, well, Bajirofro has not even got enough stone for two TCs extra right now, and Chris is coming in with a much larger war galley force, so we see yeah, Bajirofro Bajirofro is again. Gonna be, he's he's going to need some kind of a miracle at the moment. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, he's already retreated his villagers from these berries because he knows they're going to be harassed. And now we can see Chris trying to focus down this TC. I don't know if he's going to do it or not. Um, he can definitely hit it from there though without being in range of the TC. So he could decide to do that. Yeah, he's going to focus it down. If he can just move out of the way of the arrow fire, he should be able to take it out. Yeah, that's the thing, exactly. It's so close to, to the water that they can, and what's the range on the galleys at the moment? He's got the plus two, Yeah. Huh? so he could probably even move back and he could just snipe it a bit without even getting hit there. Yeah, it's losing HP pretty rapidly. We see a siege workshop going up on the left-hand side, and he's adding cavalry archers in as well. So, as I said earlier, even though um, Badjofer is walled, Chris is still going to batter his way in, and this TC looks like it is going to go down. Bad Joffre cannot save this TC now, and Castle Age is when you want to go up to three, not be down one. <laughs> it's kind of a big deal losing that TC. 
Yeah, is he going to be on zero TCs? Or is uh, he getting no. one up there on the gold? Yeah, he is getting one up on the gold, but he can't afford to get another one. So at the moment, Bad Jofro is TC-less, basically. Um, he has no town center, he has no villager production. Chris, on the other hand, he's up to three. He's producing villagers from all three. He's got this siege workshop up on the left, and he's got cavalry archers out, and he's ready to push in. Um, I, I don't know how bad Jofro can come back from this. It's going to be pretty impressive if he does. Yeah, even saying that, just the farm layout around Bad Jofro's town center, he's going to have to yeah. put a mill or something up there to keep it efficient. So that's another 100 wood gone. Yeah, <laughs> he can even take out a couple more farms, I think, if he goes right up to the edge of the shore. So, I mean, Chris is in such a powerful position here. He's taking out his docks, and Bad Jofro is still on one TC. He's not able to get enough stone just yet for another one. He's got nowhere near enough wood, to say the least, and he's having to defend now by making archery ranges and starting to make um, some cavalry archers here. Yeah, there's not much hope left in it unless he's got the best micro in the world and he can take <laughs> out those galleys without losing a cavalry archer or go storm Chris's base. It's not looking good at all. No, I think the stone wall gonna be taken out by the battering ram, and uh, Chris is looking pretty damn on form today. Uh, Badgerfro, he's got a lot of gold, he's got a lot of uh, food. I mean, that's a pretty good night economy. Um, the problem is he could lose his fishing ships fairly soon, and he doesn't have many villagers gathering farms, so it would be a little risky going spending all that food on nights. Um, especially as Chris should have enough cavalry archers mass to deal with them as well anyway. Just, yeah, saying that as yeah. well, he still needs to get the stables up from his wood economy to be able to do that. And on that point actually as well, I don't think he has a stable, so he won't have bloodlines for the cavalry archers, which will be a massive thing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Chris doesn't have bloodlines just yet, actually. Um, he doesn't have a stable either. So, I mean, it would be fairly even on that, but Chris, he could pretty easily afford a stable and bloodlines if he wants to. Um, so, I mean, he could do that fairly soon as well. But at the moment, he's got every advantage. He's going to be attacking, as you said, from the hill, which is going to make a big difference. And you know, that ram is going to absorb arrow fire. He's going to be able to attack from the water. And it's just looking like everything is going his way right now. <laughs> Yeah, it's about as grim as it can get for back Jofro, but oh, the AoE gods were definitely in favour of Chris in this one. <laughs> definitely. Uh, he's going to move in with his cavalry archers. Um, I mean, the ram can easily take out the watchtower here, and the cavalry archer, they really aren't going to be able to do much at all to take out the ram. Bad Jofro has his own siege workshop. He's making a couple of mangonels to defend, and that could work out fairly well. I mean, mangonels attacking uphill, they don't do quite as much damage. Um, they can take out the rams, but um, it's still looking a little bit dicey for him. <laughs> Yeah, just looking at the scores, you can see how far Chris is in economy. He'd, he's going to be slaying the economy at the moment, where Back Jeffro has been forced to put up another town set after losing one, which is massive. He doesn't exactly have the best layout at the moment. He's being pushed back into his base. He's probably going to lose those gold soon. Yeah. And, oh, this is nice. He's going to actually go straight away with a counterattack. He's going to be like, right, Chris, I know you're outside my base. I'm going to make a couple of mangonels to defend, and I'm going to send my cavalry archers straight over to your base and try and do some eco harass, because he knows how far behind he is in eco. He has to try and catch up somehow or level the field a little bit. Um, if you look at their populations, it's 79 for Bad Jofro. Chris is on 111, which is it's quite a big difference, but it's not huge. It's not like, you know, a, it's not like a, a 80 population difference. It's still actually, it's managed. It's, he can actually manage to close the it's gap. It's still a, a game. Bit. Yeah. It's he still can a game. Manage. Like you said, he's just he can't play a standard game right now. And moving out with these villagers, Chris might have got a little bit lazy, considering he knew he was putting on all this forward pressure. Might not have stacked his buildings very defensively, and he might be able to get in there and grab a few kills. Yeah, exactly. He's not really got a wall off at all, and Chris is forced to put villagers inside his TC, which is of course going to stop them from working. And Bad Jofro could get a couple of picks on villagers here. He's also moving forwards and taking this gold on the front, so that was a really nice uh, move from him. And also, this Manganel here, it's actually going to defend, taking out these cavalry archers, and Chris's attack, <laughs> miraculously, it's it's not actually all that. <laughs> So, That's actually an amazing defense he's played here. Mm. He's lost his tower, but he has managed to take out pretty much all the cavalry archers. That ram will be taken down eventually. 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's the actually amazing yeah. defense play. Really well played by Bad Jofro here. I mean, losing a few cavalry archer over in Chris's base, but I mean, any sane man would probably have given it up after losing that TC. But he's still deciding to play on, and you know, you've got to give him credit for that. He's actually doing a reasonably good job of hanging in there. I mean, right now he's just going to be trying to focus on cavalry archer. He's Put his second TC up on gold as well, sending a lot of villagers to gold now. As you can see how much wood he's got, he will be able to actually um, start to make a lot of more cavalry archers and try and take the game back. Um, whether he's going to be able to do it, it's going to be an uphill struggle, but it's certainly not out of the question now. Uh, it's definitely going to be going uphill. Chris's economy at the moment is much better, but if Bakhtiofor can get in there and do the harass to get it, mm -hmm. it's definitely not off the table. Yeah, precisely. I mean, Chris is actually building a castle on the front now, though, and um, it's it's going to be really hard for Bad Jofro to actually do that much harassment. I know, of course, using cavalry archers being a ranged unit, they can snipe villagers from you know, behind trees and stuff, but with the castle there, Chris is going to see it coming. He's going to be able to get a few hits on the cavalry archers before they even get in, and... Um, it's, as I say, it's still going to be really hard for Bad Jofro, um, but he's going to try nevertheless, which is quite good of him. Oh, definitely a courageous effort here. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to stick under the, tier, uh, un under the castle so he doesn't take any arrow fire, but he did lose a couple of uh, cavalry archers pretty unnecessarily there, and uh, Chris going to move in now. He's got less upgrades, surprisingly. Bad Jofro's got the plus two defense as well. And he's pushing forwards with another TC, uh, not another TC, another uh, Siege Workshop and two more archery ranges as well. So he isn't giving up anytime soon. Um, he's still got a lot of wood and a lot of gold. He's going to try and spend it on as many cavalry archers as he can and just try and take it by land. Uh, it's... Uh, I don't even know what to say at this point. It's such a struggle that... I don't know exactly how he could come back. There would have to be a pretty extraordinary series of events. He's going to have to snipe a lot of cavalry archers, get a few villager picks. He's really going to have to be playing for the details in this game now. Every little bit of HP counts. Every villager kill counts. Yeah, exactly. And as you can see as well, because Chris has had those three Ts for much longer, his population and his economy is so much better off. He's on 137 right now. Bad Jofro is down on 77. Uh, the gap just seems to be widening. Yeah, it's getting to that point where you said it's there's a difference where you can come back from in population, and there's a difference where it's ridiculous to come back from, and yeah. it gets like comeback of the year. And there's a <laughs> point where it's just done. Yeah, basically. Uh, Chris with two Mangadellas behind this as well. Of course, he's got his castle there, so I mean, he's pretty set to go up to Imperial when he can afford it, but I don't think he's even going to bother doing that, to be honest with you. I think he might just keep the pressure on in the center, Mangadell down this TC, and, um, and, and take it from there. The thing is though, Bachi Ofro, he's got so much wood and gold right now, he's not really spending it. He's... He's, these, t these archery ranges are idle. He doesn't seem to be making any mangonels. I don't know what he's trying to do with all this wood and gold, but it's certainly not doing much up in the bank. Yeah, saying that as well, I just saw a few skirmishes from Chris, so he's realised right now, Bachofro has really gone into the cavalry archers. He doesn't have a lot else he can switch into easily with the resource and economy setup he's got. Yeah. So those on attacking, the skirmish is going to be really good. Because as we know, cavalry archers are good against skirmishes in a way because they can kind of outmaneuver them, pull them out of position. But when you're attacking, that can really be in a static position and it forces the opponent to have to engage them. Yeah, exactly. And Chris is going to be in a pretty good shape right here as he pushes forwards. I mean, he can pretty easily just defend this center area with a few mangonels and, and as you say, skirmishes as well. Uh, they, they make a really good defensive unit, especially against cavalry archers. Uh, Bajofro is still trying to get a few kills over on this side though. I'm not sure what's going on though. It's like he's put them on no attack stance or something because they should be attacking this villager, but instead they're just standing there. Um, <laughs> I don't know what that's all about. Yeah, it's things like that at this point in the game as well, which just make it, like I said, it's all about the details now for Bacto yeah. Pro, and if he loses too many of those details, there's not a lot he can do. Yeah, just donated three cavalry archers there. Um, absolutely nothing. <laughs> but yeah, Chris still going to be harassing from the shore. And another thing as well is that these ships, they can actually reach this gold. Um, they can take out the rest of his docks. They can even get in here, I think, and they can probably reach that stone as well. Um, yeah, I like the fact that Chris is still playing so hard as well. Some people get to this point and they start to slack off a bit, and that's where they lose a lot of the game. However, Chris has really just been putting the pressure on from start to 
from that barracks at the start into the galleys, then all this yeah. forward with the skirmishes moving out with rams. He's just not giving back to throw a chance at all. And is that a Tarkin I see there? Yeah, yeah, a Tarkin, a knight, uh, yes. some, some scout cavalry. He's just going to add everything. Um, so we, we see about six different units right now. Um, <laughs> a complete mix oh, it's an up. AMC record. Yeah. I know, it's usually just one or two, but he's adding knights, he's adding light cavalry, he's adding Tarkins, he's adding skirmishers. Um, I don't know if at this stage he's kind of taunting him, or if he's just... Yeah, I don't know whether he's using these for a reason, or he's just going, I'll have some of them, give me a few yeah. of these, <laughs> some rams, whatever. Yeah, exactly. Tarkins, Tarkins have got the castles. <laughs> it looks like it is, to be honest. But, um... I Saying know. that, it looks like he's even just got his units just rallied towards back to for his base now, and he's just kind of just... I think he's just trying to keep everything producing at this stage, not so much even watching them. Mm, yeah. Uh, Badger for there with the GG. I'm not really surprised. It was it was coming. It was just when. Um, at that TC, as I said, such a bad position on the water. If he'd have kept that alive, and if he'd have took the water from Chris, then he might have been in with a much better chance. But that forwards from Chris was really nice. It did a lot more damage than it might have appeared at first. And um, yeah, I mean, Chris played that excellently. Yeah, it's definitely good, just amazing play there by Chris. Like I said, he just put the pressure on from the start to finish. Didn't give any slack at all. Forced all those walls and things out of back, Jeff Rowe. It was just great play by him. Yeah, and I I just loved how he, he did the forward. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't amazing, but it, I just liked how he gave it a go. I mean, even if it was even if it was to fail, he gave it a go, and uh, I I just like to see that from players trying different things out and not just playing uh, the same predictable sort of games. Yeah, definitely putting it all in there at the moment. He was at that stage. He was really playing for it. He really wanted to get in there, and he gave it his best shot after that, but the map seemed to work against him and Chris just exploited every inch of it. Oh, definitely. He definitely did. 